Yeah, yeah, well done. So a quadruped is a four-footed animal. It turns out it's a terrible name because they have they have two feet, not four. Because these are feet and these are hands, and they're different from one another. But we'll go with it. A quadruped walks on all four of its limbs, on top of branches, for example. If this were a branch, they'd be walking on top of it like this. Apes don't do that. When apes are in the trees, instead of walking above branches, they hang below branches and walk like this. They walk basically with their hands. It's called brachiation, because this part of the bone of your arm is called your brachium in Latin. And animals that do this have to be able to put their arms above their heads in order to hang below branches. In order to do that, you have to change a different part of your body. We looked at the femur before. We're going to look at the humerus now. So this is the humerus, or the upper arm bone. In most animals, the humerus has the, the head of the humerus faces upwards and backwards because there are, their shoulders are located under their bodies so that they can move quadrupedal. Yeah? Like this monkey or this cat. Apes can't do that. If you had an, that body, you couldn't get your arms above your head to grab hold of the branch because your, your arm would be the wrong shape. So what happens in apes is the top of the humerus, this bit here, has to turn quarter turn, and over evolution that's happened. That brings the shoulders from here to here, and it allows you to do an amazing thing. Raise your arm above your head. That's why baboons don't go to raids. You've never seen a baboon at a raid, have you? Right? Do you know why? Because when the DJ says, throw your arms in the air like you just don't care, he can't. He goes, <laughs> and he has to walk home because he looks stupid. So we can tell just from this part of this bone, if it's got that quarter turn in it to, to move the shoulder out to the side to allow them to go up and win, we can tell that that animal is an ape. And that change happened about 13 million years ago, which is a reasonable amount of time, more than four or five. And that it's something we can use to look at animals that are related to, to the group that we belong to, the apes. We also belong to a larger group, which includes ourselves, the other apes, and the monkeys, like this monkey here, and the lemurs and lorises. And that whole group is called the order primates, or primates. And we can also see some characteristics that, that we have that we share with the other primates, which other animals don't have. So, this animal here is a cat. We shall call him Felix today. And cats are different from monkeys and apes and other primates in lots and lots of different ways. But one of my favorite ways has to do with their hands and feet. Okay, who's got a cat or a dog? What do you have, cat or dog? Cat. cat. What's your cat's name? Kiki. Kiki. Male, female, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah. What type of cat? Um, um, I think it's a cat. Maybe. Yeah. Ginger coloration? No? Yeah. You have to take down. Brown. Okay, you're a brown cat. Turn Kiki. What's at the end of Kiki's hands and feet? Uh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Tails on a whole different part of the body. What's on the end of the hands and feet? She doesn't have nails. She doesn't have nails. Claws. <laughs> Everyone's seen the claws of a cat or a dog? Yeah. Yeah. That's what most animals have, claws or hooves. And the bit that you see is the claw is the same bit that you have on your hands and feet here, which is the nail, except it has a deep layer and it's slightly different, and it's differently shaped. But what's significant about this in terms of looking at it in terms of fossils, which is what I'm interested in, is the bone underneath that is called a phalanx. Ooh. Anybody know what phalanx is named for? Anybody studied Roman history? Oh. Group of soldiers. It's a group of soldiers like a wedge. It turns out the phalanges, which is a plural, not phalanx, are little wedge-shaped bones at the end of your hands and feet. And in a cat or a dog, those bones underneath the claw are claw-shaped. You can see here, they're pointed and curved. And that's what most animals have. 
Primates, on the other hand, don't have that. Primate, a primate phalanx looks like this. It's a little wedge-shaped bone, and it's flat, not looking like a claw. Why would that be? Why do primates not have claws, they have nails instead, and flat fingers like that? Probably because they don't need them anymore, because they need to grip. Oh, what? They need to grip. Good point. You can do something amazing with your hand. Put your hand up like this. You're going to do something that your cat or dog or horse or camel or any other mammal can't do. You can do this. Watch. Do that. Move your thumb away. Your bones have to be shaped differently in order to do that. Your dog or cat can't do that. Their, their thumbs are back up here and you can't move them. If you can move your thumb away, and other primates can do the same thing with their big toe, but we can't because we walk on it. That allows you to grip things, like branches for hanging below them, or walking above them. The problem with having claws, if you're gripping things, is what will happen if I do that and I have claws? Claws will go into my hand. And that would be stupid, wouldn't it? See, the thing about evolution it gets rid of the stupid stuff, except for the people who live in the United States. <laughs>